Good morning, guys. So, today we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to talk about the market. We're going to talk about some companies. We're also going to discuss some other things as well. Now, a lot of people are saying the market is dying or decreasing, or just not a lot of new people coming in and the older people just coming off. Is this true? Well, it's really difficult to find out. But there is a noticeable decrease, whether it's from the YouTube algorithm or whether it's from the market itself. However, other people will tell you, no, quite the opposite. This is the best time to be in the business. I'll give you an example, Diatone. Diatone is doing pretty good. I remember the first quadcopter, which was the Diatone GT200. Hopefully that was, no, no, there was another one, but that was the one I first, first ever owned. All I can tell you was the flight controller was a piece of shit. and wasn't a piece of shit for that standard, but when you look back at it, other flight controls were way better. And the VTX, I think, was broadcasting its real 600 milliwatts, and it was overheating. So, what is it, three years now? Three years down the line now, they have their new Mamba stacks. They're good. They're okay. Price to performance, they're great compared to the previous generation. So they've gone into the market. They've gone into the budget market. Now, what's really nice is they give you a high-end drone, and then they give you budget components. So it's, it's, it's really the best of both worlds. And it doesn't seem like they go cheap, which is really nice also. It's, it's crazy. Like They really put time, effort, and thought into most of their products, and it's, it's actually showing. Yes, you get your occasional burn on the uh, Mamba 30x30, the F405 version. It's using an NNP, not the most efficient, but it's not going to affect you that much. If we were talking in toothpick size, that'll affect a lot. But in th these types of 5-inch quads, it ain't going to affect much. So Diatone's doing pretty good, as far as I understand. Now let's jump to the toothpicks. Now I think a big reason why the market is slowly shrinking is 5-inch quads are becoming much, much harder to fly. Much harder to fly. And I'm a great example of that myself. Now, why am I so obsessed with the toothpick? Why did I go buy a bunch of equipment? Why did I modify a bunch of my equipment to do some toothpick testing? Well, because I'm in search of perfection and efficiency. And all thanks to Kebab for creating this whole new class, uh, which has just been amazing. Now, I want to see in data what its full potential is. And that's what I'm going for in this channel right now. I'll still review the other things also. Everything will stay normal, but behind the scenes, I'm not just reviewing. I'm actually researching. And why am I researching? Because I like it. I love it. It's awesome. You should get one. Now, people don't understand. They think it's a hype. It's not a hype. There's no hype about it. Five to seven minutes of flight time. Super quiet. Super powerful. Super cheap. Super cheap. Yes, okay, you'll burn the flight controller. Oh my God, $20. So what? You will burn it. You are using it a lot. Well, I'm actually using them a lot. Still, a couple things burned. Talked about in my previous videos. I'm not going to get into that here. And, you know, what do you expect? Tiny fets. Tiny, tiny fets. So right now, I'm looking for efficiency. Now, you know, another clear representation of the status of our community or the hobby or the industry or the market, whatever you want to call it, is you take a look at the comments on the bigger people when they talk about a product. Uh, for example, a really great example was yesterday I was reading the Vanover on Rotor Right, the Vanover, the Vanover Motors. Now the Vanover Motors, they're, obviously they're made by RCN Power, they kept the same design. But you know, when you read the comments, you can see we have a lot of veterans, not a lot of new people. That's one video. There's still plenty more I'm not going to mention. You guys go ahead and check those out yourself. But you can kind of get an idea of the mentality of the current community, or at least the ones that are speaking. Now, I know most of my viewers are usually research laboratories, military, or even probably some kind of intelligence agencies. Um, it's, yeah I've, yeah, I've gotten a lot of crazy messages and stuff. But, yeah. So, I know most of my viewers are basically... Not most, maybe I would say 20 to 35 percent of my viewers are possibly some sort of a laboratory testing equipment and just getting a head start, which is great, great, but contribute something that'd be even better. Um, now, what's the next step? 
Should I do more vlogging videos with some drone flights? Should I go into some tech stuff? Start testing the latency of gaming mouses? I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I stay here? Or just do this and do something else? What do you guys want to see? I'm losing my identity when I was out flying a five inch. So, even though I'm flying a lot, a lot I'm like way more than I usually do with the toothpicks. I just stick them in the backpack and just head out. Charging is like three seconds. I could take anything and charge. Like one of these, look how small this thing is, and charge. Go try a toothpick. If you ever try a toothpick, go buy a toothpick. Buy the, start out with the sail fly, it's the cheapest, the hobby model sail fly, and then upgrade. The other ones are much more power hungry, so they're not going to be as efficient. And it's cheap components. I, rec I, I truly guarantee you're going to enjoy the living crap out of it. And even people who's burnt them, they've emailed me and they say, I don't care that it burnt, I've had so much fun with it, I'm going to refix it. Some people even bought three. They're good. Now, five inches. We just had a new regulations drop in European Union. I'm not going to get into the specs of it, but at the end of the day, it's not as bad as the US, but it can be. But I just figured out my regulations here also, so I'm going to try to see how I get a permit. But this way it'll allow me to fly my five inches, kind of, hopefully. I don't know what it'll actually allow me to fly, so I have no idea. Everything is so vague, you know? Even if you follow everything by the law or what you read, next thing you know there was something that you missed and then they could use it against you, so. Now, Rotorite, 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 Rotorite. That's all I got to say. It's too much of what you're doing. Do it, but it's overly too much. And it's just like in your face. You're just throwing shit in people's faces. So just, I don't want to see it go down in the trash. Neither do a lot of people. That's all I got to say. Now, Bardwell. He sent me the uh, the 720p low latency thingy, and I think it's still stuck. It's been stuck in custom for a couple of weeks, and I think it's going back to him. By the way, thank you for the opportunity, Bardwell. We were supposed to collaborate together on this, and I don't know where it is. We'll just have to wait and see what the hell Customs does here. So that's something uh, I was looking forward to, collaborating with Bardwell on that. Also, Albert Kim. I met him in China. Great guy, very calm. Ditched us quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. And um, he had a great suggestion. He said, why don't you test the latency from the Access Protocol and the iBus and everything. And I said, oh yeah, I'll do that. So I'm probably going to flash a QX7 and do that. And see how well that does, the Access Protocol. Now, why not the X9 Lite? Because I like my nightly build on it. And I don't want to change it because that's my main lead driver. And if you're already get, thinking of getting an X9 Lite, Pro, the URUAV version, get it. It's really good and I've been using it. However, saying that, the charger module on it is good, but it doesn't charge to a full battery. I think you need, well, I still, I'll have a video on that later on. I'm still testing why. It'll charge to around eight volts, but it won't go above that. You know, full battery, 4.2, 4.2, so it's 8.4, so it's, 0.4 volts shy of a full battery. But at least it gives you the capability to run off of a power bank if your transmitter died. So that's nice. And it somewhat charges it, so it's okay. R9 works on it, by the way, I've been testing it on the Kebab FPV toothpick. It just needs tuning, just vibrating like hell. It's still a prototype though, so a lot of things could change. Even the hardware. Manual is not the correct one. It's going to be changed also. So I don't want to get into the hardware either because it's just a prototype as well. Now, let me know if you like this. Let me know. And go buy a toothpick because they're really great. I'll have one linked down below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.